So I signed up for Starlink the day that it was released. And although technically on the map, it still shows that my address, it, that the service is not available, they did send me an email saying it was available for me to purchase. And I only had a small amount of time to go ahead and respond and buy. So I did. So here it is. Let's go ahead and crack this open here. So we've got three boxes, got this tiny box, this mount, and I did pay extra for the mount and for a ethernet adapter. Got some SpaceX silicone here, some lag bolts here, a lot more mounting hardware. I'm guessing some kind of carrying case or something. And the manual doesn't say much. I still don't get what this is. And this is the ethernet adapter. Simple instructions on the setup of it. Looks like some kind of weird proprietary cable along with the weatherization around it here. And there's another plug in here that accepts the same type of plug. And then the ethernet. Let's go ahead and open this up. Here we go. Got a piece of cardboard on top and plastic molding. It's like the satellite base frame and the dish itself here. Some instructions on it. Here's the panel. I can feel the static electricity on it. There we go. There is the dish. Basically it says plug it in and use the app on your phone. So let's go ahead and hook this up outside here. Got a standard power cable here on one end, and then it's got the little Mickey Mouse connector on there because it looks like Mickey Mouse. And then it's weatherized. So we will plug this guy in. And again, that's that proprietary cable that kind of looks like it's a mini HDMI or something here. We'll plug that in. Not sure if this lights up or anything. Take a look at the dish maybe, see if it does anything. Not blinking or anything. So let me go ahead and open up the Starlink app and see if anything shows up in Starlink. Fun fact, back in the 90s, I actually worked for an ISP named Starlink. And I bet they're kicking themselves now when they went out of business on uh, selling the name years later. So it should show up as a Starlink SSID. I have to probably give it a few minutes for it to show up. Oh, there we go. That is connecting. Okay, so I will just create a Starlink SSID for testing. And I'll just say password one, all lowercase, since we're just testing it here. So now I have that set up. Now it is joining. It says it was denied. Let's refresh it. I believe it's probably setting up the password and everything on it now. So it did move on its own. Cool. So it is connecting. It says the uh, Starlink is not connected to the internet. I'm not going to let it switch the network. All right. So it shows here that Starlink is offline. We'll see if we can get it on. Oh, it says booting. Not sure how long this will take. It took about 15 minutes for it to start and now it just went to offline. All right, so it shows that it's back online. I'm gonna go ahead and run a speed test here real quick, and let's see what kind of speeds that we get. Ping is 82 milliseconds. Uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool because it's going all the way to outer space and back, but let's see here. Getting 80 megabits down, and right now absolutely nothing. Oh, oh, there we go. One megabit, three megabits, four, five, six, seven, six. Well, I'll have to see if there's some other things that I might be able to tune on it. Uh, do need to go ahead and connect it up via ethernet as well and see if I can get faster speeds uh, when it's hardwired. And what I don't know is that whether or not this will be a viable replacement for Cox internet in the Phoenix area, which currently I pay for the fake Gigablast, which is unlimited, uh, no data cap, allegedly for $150 a month. And the fake Gigablast is only about 940 megabits down and only 35 megabits up. Now there is fiber in the area. However, fiber is not ran to the homes, so it's over Doxus 3.1. And Cox is still just kind of behind the times on upgrading the neighborhoods. So now that I've got the Starlink satellite dish been running for uh, well over a week, I'm going to go ahead and run a speed test using the Starlink app. And it looks like it is getting 48 megabits down and only seven megabits up with 77 milliseconds of latency. And what's interesting is it says that there's some obstructions there around the dish. So I wonder if I move it around how much of a difference it's actually going to make. That's kind of cool that in the Starlink app, it's actually kind of uh, visually representing what the system looks like and any type of obstructions. 
as I release some upcoming videos. I'm going to go ahead and link them here and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a beat. 